this next poet, um, it's, it, where to start? Um, well, let's start. Fred was born in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. That seems like a good place. And he grew up in the West Kootenai region of British Columbia. He studied at UBC in the early 1960s and is one of the founding editors of the poetry newsletter Tish. So this is our second appearance of a former member of the Tish Collective this evening. So that feels kind of special. Um, we were, uh, Maria, of course, was here reading earlier. Um, so this moment in time in terms of, of the history on this coast, in terms of poetics, it's hard not to know that influence and to, to feel that influence um, from that particular moment in time. After graduate work with Robert Creeley at the University of New Mexico and with Charles Olson at SUNY Buffalo, he returned to the Kootenays in the late 1960s, founding the writing program at DTUC, and I think that's David Thompson University Center? University? Yep, yeah. yeah, okay. Before moving on to teach at the University of Calgary. A pioneer of online publishing, he has mentored and continues to mentor generations, plural, of some of the most exciting new voices in poetry today. Of his 17 books of poetry, Isadore received the BC Book Prize, Waiting for Saskatchewan received, received the Governor General's Award, and so far was awarded the Stevenson Award for Poetry. Diamond Grill, which was actually incidentally my introduction to Fred's work uh, long before I moved to Vancouver, is a biofiction about hybridity and growing up in small town Chinese Canadian cafe, in a small town Chinese Canadian cafe. It won the Howard O'Hagan Award for Short Fiction and his collection of critical writing, Faking It, Poetics and Hybridity, received the Gabriel Roy Prize. Wa was appointed to the Order of Canada in 2012, and he served, I'm sure, the very difficult, challenging job of Canada's Parliamentary Poet Laureate from 2011 to 2013. Um, so to learn more about his work, just a shout out to the Fred Wa Digital Archive. And also, I uh, thought I might share um, the small blurb that I wrote um, in support uh, of the back of this book, uh, which is perhaps one of the hardest blurbs I've ever written. Music at the heart of thinking, builds from intention, methodically and superbly practicing to get it right. Attentive to what is legible, wa sifts, draws, distills, and lifts. The resonant strains a reader will hear as music quote, as much space as deep time, end quote, with a clarity that, quote, articulates distances and fields. This kinetic density aerated by experience and relation, propelled by knowledge and dedication, lends necessary horizons, neuron, pacific, and infinite, as the practice and promise of galactic coherence soars. Please join me in welcoming the wonderful Fred Waugh. Oh, thank you so much, Cecily. It's just wonderful to be introduced by uh, one of the best poets around. And uh, I just loved what she's, how she's able to uh, get a hold of poetry. And I'm so happy and grateful that she uh, offered this blurb for this, this book, Music at the Heart of Thinking which is a book of improvisations, and it's been going on for uh, uh, 40 years or so, uh, and I guess might continue to go. I don't know, it's just, it comes and goes. They're, they're all responses to other pieces of writing, art, music, uh, and I don't really acknowledge those in the text or at footnotes or anything, so they're just sort of improvs, riffs. Six. Maria asked me to read this one, so, and I'm very happy to read this for her. Sentence, the true morphology or shape of the mind, including a complete thought forever, little ridges, little rhythms, scoping out the total picture as a kind of automatic designing device or checklist. Anyone I've found in true thought goes for all solution to the end concatenates every component within the lines, within the picture as a cry to represent going to it with the definite fascination of a game where the number of possibilities increases progressively with each additional bump, Plato thought. Um, the next, just kind of reading it through a selection of, of these here, and uh, so number, number 59, I think there's 170 of them in the book, but uh, they, stretch, they stretch over the years. Around here, 
I'd like to be Saint Mountain Station on the great northern tracks in the natural situation. Don't you talk of speaking, singing, soul carried forward, lines of a life, truth written in the lie of the word? Maps through the days make a lot of sense. Imagine friends beyond these times, sure a recompense. When St. Orm runs the alpine ridges on Kootenai Lake, on the beach at my feet, single waves of history break. Now I know the names to measure in this language stream. Whatever rhymes with no sense keys the dream. And the next one is, I think, yeah, uh, uh, 94, right. 94. This is no mass synapse I'm after, and I've known a while now being lost is as simple as sitting on a log, but the fumble jerked mystique clouds grabbing as the staked mistake or stacked and treasured garbage belongs familiar to a gardened world disturbed as heat. Oh, soft anxiousness to be found again and again as strange but marvelous then enlived slope of scree and marmot whistle so that, syn so that synchronous foreignicity rages in music. I want to put into a region of the cadence before fallings recognized, you know, where there's that disgraceful insolment Mao called swimming. And this is a, this is a piece, um, yeah, it's kind of just one long toke of breath, if I, but I, I don't have enough breath to do that, but imagine, just imagine. Loose change, number 108. Now I know I have a heart because it's broken, but should I fix it now to keep it stroken? Or should I hear each piece as it is spoken and stoke heart's heat so hot I smell it smoking? Or could this clock made up of parts be joking, that missing spark, a misread gap provoking, and little sock of baby breath not choking, the piggy bank of words much more than tokens, not just the gossip love is always cloaked in, nor all the meaning text is usually soaked in, but roast potatoes for a tender button, so much depends upon the things unspoken, and if the heart is just this clock around which clusters all that's not, and if the of and to and in that it is I for be was as can set these elementes far apart. Please hasten slowly, old tin man. I'll stop right now and have an egg because I know it's yolks inside and what I have to do is crack it open. Uh, this is uh, 114. And I, I think it's, a, as I recall, it's a kind of response to something Robin, Robin Blazer wrote. I don't know what, though. That's the drawer of poetry, closed to keep the lake from flooding. Probably the secret of syntax itself. Indefinite junctures of the hyphenated eam cluster posing in wait for a synapse or quilt of meaning. Nothing's wrong. In other words, a humming sound of bees, perhaps. Just throw it into the drawer. Twisted threads. Mess is poetry's mass. And uh, let's see. The next one is, uh, it's actually, I love hockey, I, and, and so this one's about a puck. First you put the puck into the net, blind and intended, old growth, free, timed, all for the of, equanimous. Game on, disengage, or share the blind spot, all that meanness inside, blindsided. She, he. Notice how the pronoun gets invaded, avoided as a kind of cultural punctuation in the hopes that family history will become class history, or more recently, architecture. This is the new social. Now you can't just go out and listen to the old tunes, blindly recording, eating things. I've always suspected the passive voice. The object of the action has such a fiery breath Minimize energy demand for heating and cooling. Go passive. Future simple and past continuous. Perfect, the present is. Nobody lifts their eyes. Silence becomes the habit. Work will use up the cattle. Their fields, phyla of proprioception. 
The pastry in the Sapir Whorf hypothesis is technician. How you think is the writing on the boards. Really, you could discover the truth, but the numinous is phenomenal. How the idea is to be perfect, the goal, the body. That's really a kind of pandemic poem I just realized coming in, just slipped in there in these gray, gray winter pandemic days. Uh, this is Data Anna Blue. It's a kind of ta it's a takeoff of a Kurt Schwitter's uh, piece. That's I think that's probably pretty pretty obvious. Oh, lie me twenty seven in. Oh yes, do lie me. Do diner tick do roll dear just dust clear here. Oh, do go lightly. Don't mind me twenty seven sins and likely let's have more. Do dine her, squeeze her, count her, her and her, but where? Do best, do worst, lie spoon in here, but ride the blinds and night with her. Do diner trick, do roll, dear dust clear, here. Lemon, yes, we're skin. How are you, biscuit leaf, shaken in the rust? Just call red luck, you'll be another bloom. Oh yes, oh yes. Do lie me, do. Do diner tick do roll dear dust clear here on the line. Fresh press, Anna. Put another on her hat. Blues to die for, groans so vocal, yes, to kiss her. Anna, Nana, na. Nana, Anna, whom? Do diner tick do roll dear dust clear here. Dining on your name before and after dinner. You then, you, yours truly, I'm there. Oh, I know it. Oh, I know you know it, Anna. Honey dripper, do salty rider. Anna, Nana, blue, do drop to here. I love your you, yours, here and here and here. And uh, this is 136. Uh, it's called Dancing. Told me that feelings were like shoulders. Used to say there was kindness in growing, but didn't ask to see the filling or the stuffing. So finally the apples fell off the tree. You see them and suddenly clap hands. This after having bitten but not eaten. Then Jack wrote the song, Shine On, Harvest Moon. The one where flesh is held close in dancing. A little different than testing the potatoes. When I asked him if he had booked a shot, he told me fish under the creek swam. The song debuted first as slung ticks of policing. Downtown it was hand to mouth and hand over hand. All around the gym we counted without thinking. One, two, three, two, two, three. Tried to keep our feet moving. It was, he said, the arithmetic of sadness. And the last one I'm going to read is, uh, it's, well, it's actually two. It's, uh, it's, this is out, these are both part of a little response to... Uh, uh, B.P. Nichols, Martyrology 9, I believe. <clears throat> 144. This is the love poem. That is the symptom. This is the footprint. That is the clue. This is the sand. That is the footprint. This is the trail. That is the song. This is the headlight. That is the diagnosis. This is the scat. That is the index. This is the referral. That is the snapped twig. This is the drop of oil in the water that metaphorically becomes the manual of reconnaissance and scouting. This is the single black hair fluttering in a small piece of film displayed in the headlights, still in love, wanting to find the right way home. And the last piece, uh, 145. That in this life alone becomes complete. It all looks done and zeroed in on one, a stony stone, a perfect single rock we be, sunk down, becoming moan. That in this life, the stranger seems to be the only one who knows the song, the one that starts with O oh, and ends just passing through. That in this life, the pronoun's heart breaks eye to you and triple tongues of me, 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 whose echoes overlap inflected waves of them, us, they, and we. 
that in this life when the meaning's over and the dog heads down to the creek, when the old man's gone and the lights go out, the last leg falls asleep, when one turns to zero, thinking's complete, just before the end of its sentence. Thanks very much. Thank you.